Okay, so good afternoon, guys. Um, I will be teaching you about financial management, or this is just an overview regarding the financial plan um, that you could use with regards to your concepts with your business. So, ito yung pwede na yung gawin. So, um, for this one, the outline of the lesson will be about the financial management, different financial statements that we have, which is uh, yung pinaka three na basic, which is income statement, balance sheet, and lastly, cash flows. So, money in general, money is the lifeblood of the business. It serves as the thing that uh, all of the businesses need in order for them to survive. Lahat naman tayo kakailangan ng konti pera para mabuhay, makasurvive uh, dun sa mismo negosyo. So, money is really essential and very important para makapag-survive uh, nga yung mga businesses natin. And so, um, the expected outcome of this lesson, or by the end of this lesson, you guys should be able to create your own income statements, your own balance sheets, and your cash flows that would be attached in your business plans. Okay. Now, financial management. Financial management is about planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. Same goes with um, the human resources, Lahat sila, lahat may planning, lahat may organizing, may directing and controlling. But this one focuses more on financial activities. As I said before, um, the finance management talks about or is all about budget allocation. So, lahat sila dumada, lahat nagadaanan nila and they need to um, give the proper budget in all the departments para mag-work sila ng maayos. Now, Sources of income or sources of money. Where do we get the money in general? For internal sources, it comes from our own pocket. It comes from our savings. It's from, it comes from our family. Uh, it comes from us, basically. But um, when we talk about external naman, yung mga outside na sources, so we have friends, we have family, bank loans, um, yung mga grants, and of course, angel investors or investors that uh, would believe in the type of business that we are doing. Next one. So these are just some of the factors that can affect your forecast. Whenever you try to do forecasting kasi in the business, um, dito niya tinitingnan kung ano yung potential for the business. It's, I, it's either going to grow or um, pabababa yung magiging income ninyo, yung profits na makukuha ninyo. Now, one of the factors is of course past economic performance. Ano ba yung nangyayari sa ekonomiya? Ano ba nangyayari when it comes to our surroundings? Like with this global pandemic happening, um, we've seen how the market crashed during um, March, April, May. And then um, slowly nagpe-pick up pa lang siya ngayon since um, there's this good news na magkaka-vaccine na, may 95% na yung effectivity of these vaccines uh, from Pfizer and from Moderna. So, um, this affects also the kind of stocks, the kind of um, economy na meron tayo. Second one is current global conditions. Again, giving you the example of the pandemic, hindi lang siya isang industry yung nalugi. Hindi lang dalawang industry, hindi lang biglang nag-crash yung market na walang dahilan. A lot of the businesses suffered because of global conditions, because of global pandemic, because of lockdowns. Third one is current industry conditions. Doon ba sa industry na kinabibilangan mo, ikaw ba ay essential pa rin or hindi na? Okay. One of the things that um, was greatly hit by this global pandemic is uh, tourists. Okay, yung mga uh, yung mga for fun activities. So um, like yung mga airports, sila yung unang sinara and sila yung huling binubuksan. Hindi rin uh, ganun kaluwag yung security and yung system na doon dahil nga sa uh, current situation na nangyayari. So, it became a butterfly effect somehow na parang na-epektohan yung isa, lahat apektado na. Fourth is the rate of inflation. The average rate of inflation is um, 3%. Right? 3% per, uh, per year. Now, if that is the average inflation, ano ba yung inflation? 
ito yung um, bumababa yung halaga ng pera na meron tayo. Let's say I have a 10,000. Let's say I have 10,000 pesos right now. And yung 10,000 pesos na yun, ginamit ko, sinave ko. Okay? Sinave ko sa normal na savings account. If I save it today and then I have this intention of using it after 5 years, that 10,000 doesn't have the same value ng 10,000 ngayon. Ibig sabihin, yung nabibili ng 10,000 ko ngayon ay iba sa mabibili ng 10,000 ko in the next 5 years. Okay? Kasi mas bumababa yung halaga niya because of inflation. That's the reason why we do investing in the first place is to um, fight inflation. It's not necessarily to grow your money agad, but it's to fight the inflation para ma-maintain mo yung value ng pera mo. Okay, the next one is about internal organizational changes. Whoever leads the company can affect everything when it comes to your budgets, when it comes to the things that you're doing and all of the decisions in the business. Next is about marketing efforts in the seasonal demand. All of the efforts na nilalabas nga ni marketing, lahat yan may kaakibat na budget, may kaakibat na expenses on their end, and uh, kailangan maging prepared tayo para daw. Now, because of seasonal demands, let's say for example, ang selling ham, okay? During the holiday season, mabenta yung mga ham. During the holiday season, mabenta yung mga plants. Pero kapag tayo ay nasa, uh, let's say, mga... March, April, May, uh, hindi naman nagmabenta yung mga ganyang bagay kasi nga, tapos na yung season nila. So, it can also affect the kind of forecasting, kind of sales and profits na makukuha ng isang company. Okay. So, looking at financial statements, financial statements are written records that conveys business activities and the financial performance of any company. We have um, the three main things, which is Income statement, balance sheet, and the last one is cash flow. When we talk about these things, first, the income statement. Income statement um, presents the results of the firm's operations or um, a performance for a given time. It has um, three main points or yung three main things, which is revenue, expenses, and sales. So, ito yung pinaka-basic na tinitingnan ng isang uh, company kung meron ba talaga, may, may pera ba talaga tayo. The proper format for a good income statement or uh, an income statement is sales minus all your direct expenses. When we talk about direct expenses, yun yung mga expenses ng mismong produkto, ng mismong product na ginawa ninyo. So that's uh, the labor of the one who created the product. That is the raw material used for the product itself. Those are direct expenses equal to the gross income. That's the gross income. Now, you need to deduct all of your indirect expenses. So what are your indirect expenses? These are your operational expenses, which compose of salaries. Salary ng supervisor, hindi naman sila yung gumagawa, di ba? Salary ng supervisor, salary ng administrators, um, sino pa ba? Uh, other operational such as utilities, um, internet, wifi, lahat lang yan uh, kasama din sa indirect expenses mo. Equal to net income. So, yan yung pinaka net income that you have. Now, taxes also may vary depending on the type of um, uh, taxes na in-apply sa inyo. So, it may be percentage tax or VAT. So, when we say percentage tax, that's 3% per product. And uh, when we say VAT, that's 12% in the overall receipt. So, um, ang percentage tax kasi ina-apply siya sa mga small businesses uh, usually. Tapos, ang VAT, any company that exceeds 1 million pesos uh, of sales per year, kailangan applied sila as VAT. So, um, yung mga Jollibee, McDonald's, automatically VAT yung binabayaran nating taxes. So, um, minus 12%. So, yun yung net income after taxes. Usually, ta uh, yung VAT, binibigay or pinapasa siya dun sa mga uh, customers. Okay. So, this is one example. So, we have here um, an example. So, if my sales is 31,000 and all of my direct expenses is 16,000, my gross income uh, would be 15,000. 
from that 15,000, I minus all my salaries, all my utilities, um, such as water, electric bill. So that's 5,000 pesos. Um, 5,000 pesos na yan, again, minus all the taxes na meron tayo. So that's 4,070. So this is um, pinaka, I think pinaka basic na financial statement that we could have um, in the business. So usually we only ask for income statements or para to sa mga uh, kailangan makita kung may sales ba talaga, uh, nalulugi ba tayo dun sa mga cost na nakocover ba natin yung mga cost na meron tayo. Okay. Um, when we talk about direct expenses, again, these are costs that has direct relationship with the sales. Um, usually, these are called the cost of being sold. Um, for product, uh, product-oriented na, mga, uh, na businesses, yung kunwari, meron kang produkto na, let's say, kape yung binibenta mo, tapos, or um, basta product yung binibenta mo, it's considered, or it's called cost of being sold. Uh, so, Kung magkano yun na bibenta mo, ganun din yung nilalaki ng cost of goods sold ninyo. So, habang tumataas yung sales, tumataas din yung cost of goods sold ninyo. Pag mababa yung sales, mababa din yung cost of goods sold. You don't consider the entire inventory. You only consider the things that are sold. Okay? Now, if you're service industry, cost of service naman yung tawag doon. Okay. Direct, uh, direct expenses can be called raw materials labor to produce the goods, commissions per piece uh, sold, and the uh, tax percentage or the percentage tax that I have mentioned a while ago. Okay? Now, when we talk about indirect expenses, the indirect expenses are those that are constant. Okay? Sila na yung mga fixed uh, operational um, expenses. So, Regardless of the value of sales, regardless of if you're earning or not, sila pa rin yung kailangan mong maintain na bayaran. So, they are often referred to as um, operational expenses or OPEX. So, it can be the rent, utility, salary, transportation, um, marketing expenses, renovations, lahat yan ay pati ng inyong indirect expenses. Okay? Now, taxes. Again, when you say that um, taxes, when you say taxes, okay, percentage tax, usually these are applied or it's called as the non-fat, um, 3% ang tawag dyan, and um, these are usually applied for smaller businesses, for big corporations na kasi we have 12%. Now, if I ask you sa exam um, kung magkano yung taxes para sa isang company or sa isang sale, isang transaction, always use percentage tax. Okay? There are a lot of taxes in the Philippines but commonly a business has taxes for sales, gross income, business permits, and the net income. Now, declare only the tax that has been paid. Okay? Tax avoidance is legal. Okay? But running away from taxes is illegal. If you get what I mean. Okay, so um, you can avoid taxes. You can avoid paying taxes if uh, alam nyo kung paano mag-work around sa mga business ninyo and um, kung ano nyo siya gagawin. Kailangan expert din yung gumagawa ng books ninyo. Okay? Only declare the taxes that have been paid. Huwag kayo magta-declare ng mga taxes na hindi nyo pa nakabayaran. Okay? All taxes or all tax still due or tax payable should not be reflected. Okay? Should not be reflected in your income statement. A lot of us um, get pre-orders. Huwag nyo muna i-declare yung mga taxes nun kasi wala pa. Hindi pa siya paid. Okay? Okay. Next is uh, the cash flow. So, for the cash flow, it declares the net amount of cash and cash equivalents being transferred in and out of the business. Now, in a cash flow, very basic lang po. Masasabi nyo na kumikita or may pera pa yung negosyo nyo kung positive pa yung cash flow ninyo. If consistently negative yung um, cash flows ninyo, ibig sabihin, you're getting money from your own pockets. Okay? The, um, the most important uh, factor here is cash in and cash out. So uh, I have here 
an example, this is the most basic um, format for a cash flow. So you have cash beginning, magkano ka nagsimula, magkano yung natira mo. Um, this is usually the cash on hand. Okay, ito na yung nasa-save up ng no, mismo business. Ito na yung nasa-save up ninyo. So ito yung natira sa inyo. So what's the beginning? Now, once you um, start saving, that's cash in. Okay, so what are the activities that uh, provides you cash? Sales. Okay, yung mga profits ang nakukuha ninyo from all of the sales na ginagawa. Yung sales of assets, sales in the business, lahat yun cash in. Saan kayo nagkakaroon ng cash out? When you start paying your taxes, you start paying your operating expenses, you start off uh, paying for your um, um, cost of goods sold and cost of service. Those are cash out. At the end of that one, you have cash in. Okay? Now, these... This is the cash that was previously incurred by the business. Hindi mo kailangan or hindi mo pwedeng tignan kung ano yung mga future mo pang gagawin. It's not about forecasting. It's what's present. Okay? So what's currently happening? So all of the inflows, those are considered as cash in for your business. So again, it can come from the sales or the revenues, investments, the royalties, and loans and interest na nakukuha ninyo. Lahat yun cash in. Okay? Pag sinabi natin cash out, so saan nagre-reflect? Ano yung mga nagre-reflect sa cash out? So again, indirect expenses, the direct expenses, um, operational expenses, all of your withdrawals, um, hat lang yan napupunta sa cash out. The moment na meron kayong out of pocket bigla na uh, expenses na kailangan yung bayaran, let's say emergency, um, nagkulang sa ganito, nagkulang sa ganyan, kailangan nyo siya i-account for cash out. Dito kasi makikita nyo agad, magre-reflect agad kung magkano talaga yung pera. Hindi nyo lang binibilang kung magkano yung um, nagiging sales or kinikita nyo. Ang kinocompute nyo dito is may pera pa ba? Yun, yun yung tinatanong. Now, um, in a cash flow statement, um, the cash balance, uh, it is the cash balance for a given period of time. So, again, cash beginning plus in minus out is the cash ending. Okay, so in a certain period, this um, all of the financial statements are usually done monthly except for the balance sheet. Balance sheet usually is a yearly. yearly. Okay, so um, yung cash end nyo, yun naman yung magiging cash beginning nyo in the second month na ilalagay nyo. So, again, uh, prior to the example, um, if my cash beginning is the remaining cash that I have, and nagkaroon ako ng cash end, let's say, 10,000 pesos, yun, 10,000 na yun, ang magiging cash beginning ko in the second month. Okay? Okay. So, um, again, this is an example um, kung wala kayong pera talaga at na, nag, um, nagkaroon lang kayo ng cash, uh, cash in sa inyong sales, um, investments na nakuha ninyo, yun yung gagamitin yung cash in. Hindi nyo siya i-account as cash beginning kasi cash beginning is the remaining money itself. Okay? Okay. So, balance sheet. Okay. So, balance sheet ang pinakamahirap na financial statement na meron tayo. And, um, personally, uh, May times pa rin na nag-force balance kami uh, kapag kinakailangan. But, um, entrep kasi kami guys. So, we have, uh, we we do hire um, accountants in our businesses um, para para mas maging maayos yung mga books namin. So, don't judge me. But, that's the reality of life. If you can do it properly, hire somebody. Hey, to do it for you. But um, yeah, um, balance sheet is actually pretty hard to do, especially if you have a lot of things to account for. So um, the, the major things that you need to remember here are assets, um, liabilities, and equities. Okay. Now, a balance sheet, this is an example of a balance sheet. Now, a balance sheet represents, represents the results of the firm's operations or performance in a given time. So, uh, let's say that we create a balance sheet for um, 2020. It will indicate or it will represent the kind of performance 
uh, that happened during the duration of 2022. So, what were the things that were good? Um, tumaas ba yung assets natin? Dumami ba yung utang natin? Tumaas ba yung um, mismo kapital na kinilangan ilabas from the owners themselves? So, those reflect are reflected through the balance sheet. Now, assets. So, I've um, explained to you guys the difference of fixed and variable assets but before. Assets in general, okay, in defi by definition, these are resources controlled by the entity as a result of past transactions and events from which future economic benefits are expected to flow in the assets. So, when we say assets, we have current and non-current assets. Okay? Just remember this. Kapag sinabi natin current assets, these are liquid, uh, can be liquidated and it can be realized within the next 12 months. Those are current assets. So, an ano yun? Cash. Okay? Ibig sabihin, makukuha mo agad si cash. Kasi, um, kaya mo siyang i-withdraw agad. Kaya mo siyang kunin agad. In the next 12 months, those are, uh, it can be liquidated, it can be realized by the owners, by the, by the business. So it's part of the current assets. Non-current assets are um, assets that cannot, okay, cannot be realized or cannot be liquidated in the next 12 months. So after 12 months, dun mo palang siya makukuha. That is part of your non-current assets. Okay? So, um, uh, liabilities naman, kapag sinabi natin liabilities, these are your obligations. These are your utang. Okay? Um, it presents obligations of the firm from the past transactions of the event. So, payments is expected to result in outflow of economic resources of assets. So, ito yung mga kailangan mong bayaran. Okay? Kailangan mo siyang bayaran. Liability siya. Obligation siya. Utang. Debt. Okay? Now, um, we also have current and non-current. Same definition, if it's liabilities that, uh, na current liabilities, ibig sabihin, kailangan payable siya and makomplete mo siya within 12 months. Kapag non-current liability naman siya, pwede mo siyang i-pay off and pwede mo siyang balikan in the after 12 months. Okay? So, we have um, accounts payable, accounts receivable, notes payable, um, mortgage as part of your um, liabilities. So, um, equities. Okay. Equities is the, uh, the capital. Okay? The capital is the value that you put into dyan sa mismong uh, negosyo ninyo. So, when we say that it's um, equity, share of capital or share capital is the issuance of company's own share uh, at par or at stated value. Um, ibig sabihin, naglabas kayo na, let's say, tatlo kayo sa group, tatlo kayo sa company. Kayo tatlo, naglabas kayo ng uh, 100,000. So, your share of capital in, or your equity, in your equities is at 300,000. Okay? Now, the second one is what we call retained earning. Retained earning is accumulated uh, accumulated earnings of the company prior uh, period adjustments for errors, dividend declared paid, uh, effect of changes in accounting policy, and appropriate retained earnings. Basically, um, a retained earning is um, make profit kayo. Naisipan nyo na i-reinvest siya dun sa mismo negosyo instead na paghati-hatian nyo siya. So, that part, yung earnings nyo in that period is now part of your retained earnings. Okay? Kasi binalik nyo sa negosyo para magamit nyo siya. Let's say, ginamit nyo for expansion, ginamit nyo para makapagpatayo ka ng ibang stores, makapag-expand uh, pa kayo ng malalaking stores. So, those are part of your retained earnings um, sa equities ninyo. Okay? So, um, when we say uh, financial statements, again, yun lang naman yung tatlo natin na kailangan natin um, pinaka- focusan talaga. So, I'm not going to be very particular on the balance sheet side, but I want you to remember the the, the concepts behind it. Um, mas magpo-focus ako sa, guys, mas magpo-focus ako sa um, income statement and sa cash flows because I think these two are more relevant and kayang-kaya niya siyang gawin. Um, however, 
um, given um, the situation that we have right now, wala kasi kayong data. Wala tayong um, data for your demand. Wala tayong data for this and that. So, hindi natin magagawa yung balance sheet nyo ng maayos. So, uh, I, I, I think that um, it's appropriate to say that uh, I'd rather see your costing, I'd rather see your income statements, um, your projected income statements, and your um, projected cash flow instead of me looking at your balance sheet because uh, you don't have data. Okay? So, what we learned today is the importance of these three things or three financial statements. Now, we move on with our financial ratios. When we say financial ratios, um, I think I've mentioned this before sa ating 3S of opportunities. Um, Napahapyaw at nadaanan na natin siya. So, it shows how much sales uh, in value or business uh, you need to cover for your total cost. Para dun sa lahat ng ginamit nyo, ilang sales tayo kailangan natin. So, um, when we talk about financial ratios, these are total profits at a break-even point. Okay? So, when we say break-even point kasi, this is the point you're at zero. Okay? This is the point wherein wala kang kinita, pero wala ka rin um, naging expenses or wala ka rin naging losses rather. Okay? So, at break-even point kasi, uh, in a break-even point, this is um, the example that I have right here, or this is the formula of the break-even point. In order for you to find out ilan yung kailangan ko ibenta okay in quantity and magkano yung kailangan ko ibenta para mag zero ako okay walang kita pero walang losses okay so this helps you figure out your quota also uh, ano ba yung dapat quota natin that is achievable for us in order for us to cover our expenses let's say monthly expenses yearly expenses so, para ma-cover natin siya, what's our break-even point? It's uh, a very important, well, for me, it's very important for me to um, realize kung ano yung quota na hinahabol ko and certain ako para hindi ako mahiratan, ganun, na mag, mag, magkaroon ng mga goals uh, na attainable and reachable rin naman. So, for break-even point, again, your fixed cost, those are your objects. Okay? Uh, over your price, your, kung magkano nyo pinapressure yung mga produkto, minus your variable cost. Your variable cost is kung magkano yung cost naman nung uh, mismong unit. Let's say that my fixed cost is 10,000 pesos. Say 10,000 pesos yung fixed cost ko pinabayara kong utilities. My pricing is 110,000. And the cost for that one, the unit cost for that one is... Um, Nine, uh, 50 pesos. Tapos yung price ko is 100 pesos. So, with that one, so you simply divide the 100, or the uh, 10,000 pesos divided by uh, 100 minus 50, which is 50. So, uh, the 10,000 divided by 50, that is your uh, break-even point in quantity. So, yun yung number of units na kakailanganin kong habulin for that specific month, for that specific year. Um, this is very relevant and magagamit ko ng kahit na anong negosyo. Okay? So, moving on from the break-even point, uh, we also have this one, target ending profit. So, when we have target ending profit, we can tawag, um, you simply state kung ano yung profits na gusto mo na makuha at the end of a certain period. So, it may be at the end of the year, it may be in the end of um, a month, uh, it helps you um, have goals also uh, dyan sa inyong mga businesses. Kasi ang pangit na lahat suntok sa buwan, hindi mo alam kung bakit mo sila tinatry i-achieve. So that's fixed cost plus your target profit. Kung let's say, I want to earn at least 10,000 pesos as part of na itatago ko bilang isang business owner. And then you add up your fixed cost magkano yung mga binabayaran ko kada buwan and then you divide it by the same price minus variable cost yun na, tumaas yung quantity mo tumaas yung uh, sales, pero alam mo na if you reach that goal meron kang mas matatago na let's say 10,000 pesos may matatago ka na target profit mo at the end of a certain period you get what I mean? hopefully, hopefully this helps okay, now 
this is uh, the formula that I have for um, cash ratios, quick ratio, and current ratio. Um, pag sinabi natin cash ratios, um, that's cash, minus cash, uh, uh, over cash, uh, ulit. Pag sinabi natin cash ratio, okay, so that's cash divided by um, current liabilities. So, kung magkano yung mga uh, pinagkakautangan mo, that's your cash ratio. Okay? Quick ratio analysis, um, para makuha mo naman yun, cash plus accounts receivables, lahat ng matatanggap ko. Okay? Receivables, matatanggap mo pa lang. Hindi mo pa siya natatanggap, matatanggap mo pa lang um, over your current liabilities. Yung mga pinagkakautangan mo na kailangan ma-pay up within the 12 months. Okay? That is your quick ratio. Now, current ratio is current assets. Uh, kung magkano yung realize and ma-liquidate mo. So, how much cash you have on hand. Um, over your current liabilities, magkano yung kailangan mo i-pay up within a year. So, that's your current ratio. Um, this also helps you um, plan out your liquidity. Um, pag sinabi kasi natin liquidity, um, ibig sabihin nun, um, ibibenta mo yung mga assets mo, ibibenta mo lahat ng mga uh, pwede, okay? Uh, na assets dun sa mismo negosyo mo para ma-turn mo siya into cash para ma mas ma-distribute mo sa, sa mga tao. So, knowing your um, liquidity also helps you to be prepared kung kunwari well, kami, di ba? Ano, nagsara ka ng negosyo. Kapag nagsasara ka kasi ng negosyo, kailangan mo parang i-pay up yung mga investors mo. Kailangan mo i-pay up yung mga business owners behind it. And uh, for you to pay them or to pay these people, you need to know your liquidity and ano yung mga assets na pwede mong i-liquidate. So, um, these ratios can help you with that one. So, cash ratios, kung magkano yung cash na kaya mo ibigay. Quick ratios, um, kung magkano yung uh, papasok ng mga cash na pwede mo i-collect from doon sa mga may utang sa inyo. And then, current ratios uh, talks about everything, all of the assets that are involved doon sa mismo negosyo mo and ano yung mga lahat ng kailangan mo i-pay up. So, basically, um, that's the importance of this is the importance of um, financials, uh, financial forecasting or financial management in general. Um, I know it's pretty hard to understand at the beginning, pero um, guys, Okay, and um, I, I really want you to look at the importance of income statements of um, cash flows because it's yung pinaka essential, especially for beginning businesses, for smaller enterprises. It's yung pinaka 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 essential talaga. Kasi yung balance sheet naman, pwedeng hindi mo siya tingnan sa, sa ngayon kung hindi ka naman masyadong, um, hindi ka naman masyadong uh, freaky, hindi ka naman masyadong nagpe-prepare or um, wala ka namang books na pinaprepare, uh, hindi ka naman nagbe-BIR pa, uh, pwedeng hindi muna. Pero yung kailangan mo kasi is the uh, cash, cash flow. Kasi doon mo malalaman mo yung pera ba sa income statement kung kita ba. Okay, so um, all of our efforts, kailangan na sustain natin siya. And to have sustainable businesses, we need to really have money. Okay, so if you have questions, um, inquiries, suggestions, violent reactions, or medyo nalilito kayo with the lessons, just feel free to approach me. Okay, so goodbye guys!